are we are we uh, bagging and tagging? Let's do it. Episode number one ninety five. Did you slap a number on it? No, we didn't slap a number on this one. I'll yet. slap it. You yeah. just did one ninety five. Yes, episode. <laughs> Slapper guest episode number 195. Is that a weekly talk show with blackguards? It is. Oh my God. Yeah. What are we doing here? I don't know. Hey, is, is, is Turbo in the back? He is. He's in the dark. What's up, everybody? <laughs> uh, Chad, you here? I am. I'm here. Where am I? Oh, you're right there. All right. Hey. Good, good, All good. Right. Hey, welcome, everybody. Slapper cast. Yep. Was it 195 already? 195. Wow. All right. We just uh, what you want to start off by saying, Larry. Larry. Larry legend. Larry. Legend. Larry. Yes. Uh, show number forty-six tonight. Yep. Forty-six blacker shows. And would you believe? We're gonna keep count from now on. Yeah. But uh, this is forty-six. This is forty-six show. And would you believe that he still thinks we're, we're a Taylor Swift cover band? <laughs> anyway, so we're uh, leaving the island. I know it looks very dark for a Tuesday morning, but that's just our charisma. Yeah. Um, we had a ball down at a place called Axe Cave from our Minnesota mates, um, Sarah and JT. Minnesota. Uh, yes. Uh, everybody needs to, uh, we're, we're going to be back there again very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, everybody needs to make a, a Galveston pilgrimage and go find a Alex in the Kitchen. Great food. One of the stop behind the bar. Um, our friends over at US Backline for putting the show together in great sound and great gear. Yeah. Uh, we only brought guitars and cables and uh, drumsticks yeah. today. Easy peasy. Yeah. What a ball. What a blast. What a great time. Yes, so, third floor in this place yeah. is an arcade and it's got uh, all this stuff. Of course, I never played as a kid, but Gal uh, Galaga. Galaga and Pac Galaxian. Man, uh, yes. And Caligula and uh, Grinder and all those good ones. But uh, we, uh, uh, that was the third floor. The second floor, there's axe throwing. There is a bar uh, about as big as some buildings. A uh, wraparound bar. Beautiful, 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 beautifully laid out. Nice lush carpet. One of the. Uh, uh. And then a uh, great balcony overlooking um, the Strand. The Strand, Strand Road. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of lightning over here, too, if you want to oh. send the kids into uh, Blinded by the Light. And uh, so I'm just getting tired of saying it, but, you know, just people that I love people that do their job. I love people that do a good fucking job. Yeah. It's just so nice. Yeah. And speaking of good job, we're going to have a we're gonna have a guest this week. We do. We do. We've got a guest, a very special guest from a place called Kerry, County Kerry in Ireland. Nice. Yeah. And uh, a very, very, very wonderful interview. If you're planning, which I hope you are, to join us in 2023, October 2023, in Ireland, young Dennis O'Carroll from County Kerry is yep. on the show today. He's the man who's making it happen. He's putting it all together. Yeah, you're looking at the screen, you're saying, well, wait a minute, it's not you, it's, it's, the screen isn't repulsive as I remember it. What's happening? Well, this is our friend Dennis O'Carroll right here. He's in Florida. How are you doing, Dennis? How's it going? See? See? Great. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That's how you say it. Say, please, again, one more time for the kids at home, Dennis. Say it again. How's it going? <laughs> See? Uh, excellent. Where, where are you from? Florida? Uh... Not, not really. No, I'd be. I, I, started, I started out in Kerry, and I kept the accent. <laughs> what, what part of Kerry? Little village called Waterville. Oh, I know it well. I, I went to school. I went to Irish. Well, they, they called it Irish College, but we went to Banaskellings for uh, uh, two weeks, quite a few summers. Oh, nice! Right I road could road. look out my window at Banaskellings Bay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the Heimses oh, yeah. that owned the farm where we all stayed? I don't. You're pro yeah, you're probably a lot younger than me. I, I, I thought I knew everybody. Yeah, but we they, stayed in a... They actually just got to the Irish College, so they're not doing that anymore. I'm surprised so they the didn't after one... us. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I went to, I went to I Irish College back in, um, back in the Gaeltacht, back in the West of Kerry. Oh, God, it was, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. I'll tell you, I, I lasted... Lasted about, I think there was, I think there was three days to go when they finally kicked me out. Oh, 
that was a little embarrassing having my father come to pick me up from Irish college. But anyway, wow. didn't learn any Irish, by the way. Of course not. I mean, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. There's quite a lot of, uh, uh, well, there would be a lot of misconception if you said Irish college, people are going to think that it's some well-to-do, some, you know, hybrid. It's not. It, it really is. It's a crack festival for, you know, two, you know, two weeks. No, no, no sleep, no, well, depends who you go with, but yeah, there's no, just, just no rest. Literally trying to make out with every girl at the college. <laughs> it's all about yes. the numbers. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, back to 14 years wow. old, and we were just trying to get our numbers up. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just hanging on for dear life. I, I, you know, I was just trying, no idea what the hell I was doing. <laughs> it's really. very important to get to know the locals, though, because if you got to know the locals, you know, usually someone that's between the ages of 16 and 18, and they would hook you up with the beer and some vodka, whatever you needed. And then it was a real party. <laughs> yeah man oh the, the stories the stories the story. so uh so when did you leave kerry i left kerry 18 uh, i suppose no it was about 14 years ago this time but i had spent a few years in the states and i was actually born in new york and my parents bought a hotel back in waterville so we moved back there oh so, which hotel a lot of movies oh, uh it was called in your time it would have been the jolly swagman okay i know the name yeah, uh, right I, I, I saw. Waterville. Yeah, I, I know Waterville. I mean, I, of course, it's been so long since I, I'd be lying if I could tell you. You know, I mean, I do remember. You know, the the farmers would leave the the, the bikes, you know, by the ditch, and we'd all, we'd all, we'd always have a, a a spare bike. You know, if you if you got a flat, but man, you, yeah. you better put it back because uh, they know where you are. All the lads were in Heinz's uh, the farm. Uh, uh, I, I'd love to tell you I, again. It's just been so long since I've been there, but brilliant, brilliant crack on, on, on just all together. Gorgeous beaches down there too. People have no idea how. Uh, I mean, s- stunning. I mean, it's a be- it's a beautiful part of the world. I mean, the Ring of Kerry from the time you get to from Glen Bay all the way back to Killarney is just fantastic. N- nothing it's like it in the world. Yeah, nothing. Like it. Nothing like it. We'll have to get you guys to do a beach gig on the way around the ring. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, That'd that's be great. great. Oh, stop. I'll, I'll, I'll leave now. I'll start walking. Um, and make that happen. <laughs> yeah. So so, 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 what brought you? How, how did you get into it now? So the family had a hotel. Were you always into tourism? Were you always, did you always have a knack for it? Always. That was, it's pretty much the only game I knew. Um, my grandparents had a, a bar and restaurant and hotel right right in the halfway marker on the ring of Kerry. And that was just, they would pump the buses in and out. And, you know, we all learned, learned the trade there. And from there, I came over to the States, um, which was initially supposed to be a vacation. And my brother was in the process of opening a bar in New York. So figured I'd extend my stay for a few weeks, help him out, get it started. And lo and behold, that was it. I, I had the bug and I was in the bar business in New York and I ended up buying my own place, which was Doc O'Grady's. And um, my oh. wife, who was, uh, who was in the medical field, was accepted to a fellowship in Florida. So at that point, it, I tried the commuting for a little while. It just wasn't working out. So I no. ended up moving to Florida and selling up shop in New York. And making this the the home base, brilliant. And, and, and I have to say, we've we've heard um, we've heard just tremendous things about about uh, you, you and 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 you, you, you know your travel agency. I mean, you, you you deal with not just rock and roll bands, but you also do the you also do the golf trips. You do the you know you just do you do it all right. You, you do the group tours, everything. Yeah. So so I've kind of kind of split it up into two there's docs golf tours and then there's docs irish tours so the irish tours is essentially the larger groups like bands i have a a bunch of bands on the books and um for instance right now working on a the fdny trip we have 200 guys from the new york fire department going over there for the notre dame game next year i think i probably got another 300 already booked in for that week um, wow. And it's a mix between Doc's Golf Tours and Doc's Irish Tours. So 
kind of juggled between them. Yeah. It works. Oh, yeah. Make yeah, big time. See, we, we played with the Nassau County Firefighters up in uh, New York, and they're, uh, that, that group alone could probably <laughs> – they could probably fill two buses. It's just it, it's I know it's a lot shocking. of guys in the pipe band. I know a lot oh, of guys I, in that pipe band. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you cool. and I talking on the phone just the last couple of weeks. The, the through lines to just not not just not just Ireland, but New York and to all over. I mean, the music. I mean, just it, it's staggering the amount of people that we that we know. Unbelievable. Uh, small, small I mean, world. it's a small world, especially when you're Irish. You know, that's the ticket. It's, uh, it, it's a small world for sure. So, so we have the Byrne brothers to thank for for introducing you. Although I think we, you, you and I might have crossed paths before. Uh, a, a lot of these names, a lot of these names are very, very familiar. And uh, but we, we're, we're we're just so excited at not just to have you on, but also to talk about the uh, route that we're taking this time because we went. You know, we've done this. This is be our ninth tr- uh, trip, and. I'm most excited about this one because I was able to talk to you about these off the beaten path and new, you know, just taking it Change on a different. Yeah. And, and, and I have to commend you as well on your, uh, you know, it's not just, it's not just an empty box with a tick in it. You know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a, you have personal relationships with, with, with the hotels, the, the, you know, the pubs that we stop at and stuff like that. It's just, it's, that was, that was what, the selling point for me was it was just beyond a personal tour. Yeah. It, it, it really is. It's a, I'm very, I'm very fortunate in that sense that I, you know, I know so many people in the, in the industry back there and it just, it gives that little bit of extra, extra special effect when you, when you're, when your operator actually knows the people you guys are seeing when you get there. And, you know, I know the bus driver so well, and I mean, we've got a great rapport, you know, you guys are going to have the, the best in the business is going to be is going to be driving the first bus anyway. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have that first bus sold over the next week or so, I would think. And that's going to be Tony McCarthy. Tony is an absolute legend around uh, around the roads of Ireland. Very cool. He knows every inch. Yeah. Unbelievable. But the good thing about your trip is when I was talking with you initially, and, and I love this, um, you know, a lot of groups will go there when they're planning – they want to do so much, so much stuff. They want to fill their day with, oh, I want to see three castles. I want to I want to see the cliffs on the same day. I want to do a boat trip on the same day. And at least you knew the, the story that you just can't cram everything in. And that's why your trip is very, very open-ended. You know, you get back to the hotel, we'll say, at 4 o'clock in the evening. There's still plenty of time if people want to go off and do a distillery tour or go off and do a horse and cart ride around around Clarny National Park or Sea Muckers House, any of that kind of stuff, that's no problem. And, and, and that's part of the concierge service. You know, we'll be in constant contact and, you know, we can make arrangements for, for any of that, those extra things if people want to do it. But all in all, from my experience, um, I like what you're doing. Don't overfill the day. Yeah. Allow, allow you to relax and have a few pints you know, stop at the different pubs, off the beaten track, especially, and um, you know, you, you just don't want the pressure of uh, having to stick to a schedule. Yeah, yeah, we've we've learned over the thing, and and again with your help too, we were able to because I just told you basically the area, and you were you were like, got it, got it, got, it. and it was just it's brilliant because I I have you know I, I'm not there, I'm never uh, I, I when I'm home, I'm either visiting family or getting ready to leave again, you know, so it's never never get a chance, yeah. and you you know all these you know all these bars and 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 you know you know not just as as a your business acquaintance but punter you know we've been you've been on the right side of the bar you know so it's a it's a yeah. it's just it really is it it's a it's a dream come true for me because now there's no there's no fluff speaking of the experience with bars though i i i find it hard to believe if there was a bar that i haven't tested their product tried and tested <laughs> hence the reason why i don't I try not to touch it anymore. I, I, yeah. I've seen it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been to the top. <laughs> yeah. Been to the top. Been to the top, which is actually the bottom when you, we, I, I don't know. It depends it's how you look at it. If, you around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're, if, if you're 21, it's the top. If you're, if, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're yeah, double, if that, you're it's, the bottom. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Um, All good times, though. We can't, yeah. we can't regret living. And when we were talking, Chad and I were talking uh, yesterday about this as well. And uh, the we were talking about that the, your, your your friend that owns the brewery in Cork. Yes, Shane Long. Shane Long, that yeah. Does he work with Coors? Uh, he's a consultant uh, with consultant. Coors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dave, uh, David Coors and him would, would have a very close relationship because Coors Light bought Franciscan well. And in the actual deal of buying the, the Franciscan well, they didn't buy the building that Shane kept the building and he operates tours and, and he has bands playing there and he's got like pizza trucks set up and it's, it's a, a really cool spot. You know, you're not, it's not like he's got tours going through there all day. It's more of a unique kind of um, tailored option. It's not. It, it's it's more that off the beaten track kind of um, experience. So it's really cool. Wow, excellent! Yeah, yeah. I'm delighted. That was the, the Chad's eyes lit up too. I told him the, you know, a, a, anytime you mention beer, actually, if you mention beer, women, or rock and roll, he's always. But he was he was exceptionally, <laughs> exceptionally giddy about that. Yeah, that was, yeah, I saw the pubs on on the on the itinerary, and and I know that our our people are going to just dig that. That some of the best memories I've had of previous tours were the days where we stopped off at at some just great pub off the road uh, along the route. Yeah, so, yeah, it makes people, all the they, difference, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, Killarney is Killarney is a fantastic town, and you're you're staying in Galway as well. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. Galway, Killarney, and Cork. Yeah. Yeah, this would be the most time we've spent in Killarney, I think, on this tour. Yeah. I think we've been there maybe two nights max. Not, I don't even know if it's been two nights that we've ever stayed in Killarney. Yeah, this I think so. It's been cool. overnight. Yeah. yeah. Some great pubs. And, yeah. Yeah. The, and, but you, there really isn't. So people will say to us all the time, and, 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 and Dennis, I know you get this all the time, but they'll say, hey, we're going over. We have a week. You know where where do we go? And I tell them, I, I you just throw a dart. I mean, just throw a dart at it because I can't. A, again, you're asking how long is a piece of string, right? Because if they say that they have an hour, you know, or a week, you know, to, you know, to me that's that's not close to you know. Just go to one spot and stay there. I mean, it, it, again, if you're drinking, you know, st- stick to you know a, a small area. But I mean, so what, what, what would you say? I mean. Because this this is my the, the, there's 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 two ways that we go and, and, and every every way that you go that you know that you're going to miss out on something huge you know because I love I love the, yeah. the, the the Antrim coast I, I've just there's nothing there's nothing like it in the world again there's nothing like the yeah. yeah so we, we we can never can never do both because there's never just there's never enough time and again we don't want to overstuff the days like you said. So, but if you if you had to if you had to now you you you're definitely a, an authority on this. So, what what would your where where would you send them if they have a you know a limited amount of time? An alternative route, an alternative route for me would be landing in Dublin, going north along the Antrim coast, heading to Donegal because Donegal is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it doesn't get the credit that it's that it's due. There's so much in Donegal. So you can spend some time in Donegal, come down along to Donegal Town, down to Sligo, Mayo, and then you could actually finish in Galway where your trip is starting and head back to Dublin. Yeah. So kind yeah. of north, north and northwest. That's what we're thinking of, you know, for the next one. But, you know, it's just you can't lose. You really can't lose. You know, you can even you can even go to a village. You know, you can just go just get in a car and just stop in, in a village just don't even know where you're going yeah. and stop there, you know, and how about, you know, but sure. I have, I have groups that go over there for, you know, four days and they're trying to take in so much. I'm like, if you're flying into Dublin and you're just there for four days, you know, if it's golf, it's one thing, but if it's a non golfing yeah. trip for, I mean, you can just go, go outside Dublin to Wicklow. So do a couple of nights in Dublin, a couple of nights in Wicklow and you've, you've done the country in the city. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, just so many options over there. Yeah. And like you said, you just can't lose. You can't miss. You really can't, you know. Now, you guys are going to the Iron Islands on this trip, right? Are we going I believe to- so, yeah. Yes, you're going to the Iron Islands. So that's a that's a great, a great experience as well. You know, everybody can do, you know, when they get there, they can do the horse and cart. They can do, you know, you can bike around the island. You can hop in a minibus and go around the island. Um, 
and then you can just bar hop around the island. I mean, it's it's so much fun out there. Cool. It's really really cool. Just a great yeah. environment. I mean, you're, you're out in the middle of the ocean. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah, yeah, and nice. it's funny. There's 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 a there's a new uh, uh, Brendan Gleeson movie uh, that was just shot out there. The Banshee. The Banshee. Or what is it? The Banshee of Inish. What is it? Banshee of Inish yes. or something? Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. And, and I I know a lot of the guys in the in the tourism in, tourism industry out in the Iron Islands, and I mean they they said it was just so much fun having Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson those guys there, and they just became just like locals for for a six month period. Wow. Yeah. And we'll, Even one yeah. of the horses, the horses we've used for the horse and cart was actually in the movie. Yeah, yeah, we heard, we heard we had turned oh. into a bit of a diva. We heard after a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine, but I, again, you know, to really hammer home that point, you know, we we've, we've never experienced, and I think it might have been different back when I was growing up. But we because we didn't treat tourists the same, at least not where I was. We didn't treat tourists the same as they do now. Uh, it's. Uh, we we would give them wrong directions. You just you just kind of look down on them, you know. We just uh, you know, oh, it's, it's it's back that way, you know. That's that's the sea. I'll just get in and keep going. But uh, the hospitality shown in every place that we go is second to none. There's just nowhere. There's just nowhere that's that's as inviting and as as friendly as uh, as as when you go to Ireland. Oh no, I mean it's 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 incredible the hospitality level over there, and and even. Over the last few years, you know, even going up around Belfast and Derry and, and County Down yeah. and places like that, I mean, they've they've they followed the model and their yeah. their hospitality is fantastic as well. I mean, it's across the island; people know where their 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 bread is buttered. You know, you have to look after the tourists, and it's a it's a great industry, and we've yeah. a great reputation for it. So, yeah, why not? I mean, next year in Ireland is pretty much capacity for the whole season. Yeah. It's, it's wow. Yeah, well, so I'm back. telling people now, I said, look, if you're on the fence, just remember that. Just remember what we've been through in the last couple of years and just go. You, you know, you can always, you know, you always get you always get money back. You can't get time back. Get on the, yeah. you know. No, I think, I think that's something we've learned from from the COVID era. You know, you just got to yeah. take, take life by the horns. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Absolutely. I, I know that you've got a lot of calls to make today, and you're you're uh, you're a busy man. Maybe we do this again. Uh, this has been great fun. I I, I want to, <laughs> uh, we 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 have to we have to uh, uh, take a trip through Waterville again. We might uh, might actually be related. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's, it's actually on the um, it's on the itinerary, so yeah, we're going to be yeah. there. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So let's get you on here again, um, and uh, and you know, really appreciate you taking the time today and uh, coming on here and introducing yourself. And that you know, I know a lot of the people that 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 are uh, slapper cast heads. You know, they'd be delighted to to, to see you, to meet you, whatever. So, uh, would put your website on here, and your you know, all, all our crew have got your information. So, you're a you're a marked man. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, Dennis. It's been a pleasure, guys. Holes and blows and shows, everything. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> blow, singular, sorry. So, anyway, <laughs> damn true, friends. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to that. And then, uh, uh we opened up, up, up a pub, uh, last Saturday night. Yes. Uh, let's just call it the big Saturday. It's been cool, so we might be talking about it on the next episode. <laughs> uh, most likely will. <laughs> Our good friends, Lisa and Neil, aka Spud, they, uh, opened a brand new spot we've known them for years Lisa's mother and father Gene and Pierce Finley had a bar called the Beverly Pub where Chad and I first met oh, cool. and uh, that actually that's not entirely true Chad and I I think well, met at the Pig and Whistle but we possibly didn't, we didn't yeah, we didn't know, yeah I'm sure we ran into each I'm, other I, there's a very high probability I bought a rolling rock from you at least once yes and he <laughs> uh, and he uh he used to also, uh, he was the head drag reader to, to children. That, anyway, so uh, uh, so Gene and Pierce used to own the Beverly Pub, yeah. which is hands down the smokiest fucking pub on the planet. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Turbo, you played any gigs where you just felt like you had 
not only ca ca caught cancer, but you had enough to deliver to, to the general public when you left? I think I blocked him out of my memory. There's Heartbreakers. Here we Get go. a shot. Hey, Ben. He said hi. There was a, there was a, uh, his friend Mickey came out. <laughs> What's up, Mickey? Yeah. He's so fine. He said, he said Ben really wanted to be there tonight, but he's, he's working. He's working. Yeah. As a waitress oh, yeah, at a cocktail bar. As a stripper bar. Heartbreakers. We should go. All right. See y'all later. <laughs> ben Ben went to Ireland with us uh, twice. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Just oh, once? Twice? Yeah. Twice, yeah. Three times. Where were we? Yes. So much, much, much to talk about. I think it's killing song time. Yeah. Anybody want to kill? I do. All right. Go, Chad. All right. He looks like a killer. I, Psycho killer. I had this song in my head. I don't know, remember where I heard it recently, but I, every time I hear it, I'm like, this song is dumb. And I was a little surprised to hear, or to find out that it's a song by the Beastie Boys. Uh, oh. Brass Monkey. That's a good one to kill. It's a, it's a monkey Monkey. Every time I hear that, I'm like, God damn it. Is it supposed to be a kid's record? I mean, I, I'm not really, I don't get it, what the appeal of that song is. I think Monkey is just And fun. I like a lot of Beastie Boys stuff. It's, I think fun. it's fun to say. It's I think, fun to I think that's what it is. It's Monkey Monkey. <laughs> That's a terrible song because one of the one of the very few nightclubs I ever worked at would play that all the time, and uh, a couple of people used to dance to it. Ironically, I will say, but it was more ironically yeah. than ironically. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, Not much more to say about that. Yeah. So yeah, good good, good kill. Uh, what are you gonna shine a light on? I'm gonna shine a light on a song called Angel Eyes by Roxy Music. That's a good one. And there's two versions yeah. of this song, actually. Now, I'm curious which one you're familiar with. Uh, there's, there one, there's one, I think the first version, it's on, on Manifesto. And then they, I think they redid it on Avalon later. And it's, they're That's both very one. different versions. They're both great. The first one is my favorite. It's it's uh, a little stranger. <laughs> And uh, it's just it's just a great, really weird guitars on it, and uh, just great melody. And the, the way he sings, I like the way he sings the, the first version better. This I mean, the second one's a little groovier and a little a little more easy listening. Um, but yeah, it's a great, great, great song by Roxy Music, Angel Eyes. That's a good. I, I just love the melody of that song. Yeah. And I think Brian Ferry has got one of the one of the. And we talked about it before. I think I was. I was shining a light on the Spandau Ballet number. Yeah. And I always think that Brian Ferry and Tony Hadley were very similar in their uh, in their delivery. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And another guy that's similar in that vein, it was a, I don't know his name, but he was a singer for ABC. They did uh, Shoot That Poison Arrow. Yeah. Uh, great singer. Really, really beautiful voice. Yeah. And I just don't think he got enough credit as a, as a, that, that, that's, that era. Tony Hadley is cool as shit. He's, Do you know he's, any of these, Turbo? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You've heard the songs, yeah. You've heard True. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, agree. I know I heard... this much is true. That's Ben Yeah. Uh, Actually, yeah. Tony Hadley is touring right now. He's, he's doing a solo. He's got a solo career. And he's very, very active on Instagram and stuff. He's looking good, and he's uh, got a nice career. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, Turbo, you want to kill? Yeah. Let's kill. Sorry, my voice is a little... What happened? I was rocking tonight. You were a minute. You, you were there a second ago. <clears throat> I was just he's, there. He's just doing this for the camera. Right? No, this is for my glorious leader. <laughs> do, uh, how You Remind Me, Nickelback. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. See ya. It's time to go. Yes. <laughs> Fox, it's time to go. God. If it comes on, I'm automatically changing your station. <laughs> just know that. Change, seek, skip, whatever it is on the radio. Yeah. Gone. Right? Good one. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. And the one to uh, resurrect. I don't know if I did this one, but it, I heard it today. It was wrong sign. What? Two Hoss. Two Hoss. Oh, my that, oh yeah. God. Dude, that group of bikes came down. Oh, my God. Last Friday. And. Let's see what I did there. Nope. And. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I immediately started bobbing my head air guitar and the guy next to me is like, yes, I was like, yes, I just was so amped up. That. I'm like, listen, that doesn't, man, I'm all like, you. if that doesn't get you pumped up, yes, there's something wrong with you. I think that song is awesome. I don't even know what he's saying. I'm right. Like, I have no idea what he's saying. I think yeah. he's, he's, he's saying something about, um, uh, 
Tuesday Slappercast. I think that's what the song was written about. Subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what a great fucking. My daughter Tara turned me on to them, and I have watched and listened and loved so much Rammstein since. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I remember. I, I think I remember one of the first times I ever heard it, and when I heard the guitar tone, and. Uh, I heard the guitar tone and I heard the, the, those kind of 80s melodies yeah. in, the, in the background. Sometimes they're faint, sometimes they're they're really pronounced in, in, in the mix. But it was just, it was jaw-dropping and it was like, I see why these guys are so popular. They are, if you have not, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen, actually don't, don't go check them out. If you've got a weak heart, don't go look at their live shows. Some of them are quite explicit. But the sound and the quality of their music is outstanding. Yeah. Amazing. I think it's time to grab their stuff and put it in the headphones. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a lot of shit done listening to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to start with the shine of light because okay. I'm going to keep it in that vein. Um, there's a song by Pantera, uh, Texas Boys. Um, well, Phil is from New Orleans, but anyway, uh, it's a song. It's a song called "Yesterday Don't Mean Shit." Good lyrics, great riffs. Everything Dimebag did, every time Dimebag Daryl did on guitar, was groovy, heavy, heavier than heavy, and then most heavy. It was, but it always had. It always had just great bite to it. Yeah. Great, great beat, great. Anyway, so uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very, very. Uh, it it, it kind of tips its hat to a lot of metal, and it, but it also it's got that pure Pantera power. Check it out. Um, okay. So and the song I'm going to kill is. Uh, uh, oh. It kind of it kind of changed when we were talking. You know, it was like um, a song that I want to kill. I was going to do a Van Morrison song just because I didn't want Kelly Navarro from Atlanta uh, setting the dogs on us. She's probably not old enough to know who Van Morrison is. But um, why not just go ahead and kill Van Morrison song? Okay, well I'll do that. I'll stay safe. So the Van Morrison song I want to kill. Is uh, the brown eyed girl one? Really? Yeah. I thought we were gonna kill that. Do we? I thought we were gonna kill that already. Oh, I heard it the other day, and I just it, it just somebody was like, well, you know, he went, he did a he did a money grab, and he yeah, yeah that is up there with hotel Cal. Yeah, totally. It, but but to, to to me, when you listen to the so last Friday, wait wait, thank you, Turbo. Yeah. Uh, last Friday. We, we wrote a song on stage and, and it kind of felt like some songs don't land, you know, when you when you start riffing, you know, some songs tend to just kind of uh, float and then they dissipate and they kind of scatter. Yeah. Some stay the course. Yeah. That one on Friday stayed the course. It felt like that too. You guys were like behind me. Uh, but the rhythm section Holds, holds fast when the rhythm section does their job and digs in and drives that fucking machine it's so easy and I'm not saying I wrote you know hey, but it was it was one of those things where everything got to line up because you're able to you know there, there's guardrails there because you guys are doing your job cool. but to me uh, uh, Brown Eyed Girl sounds like the band Kind of carried it for him. Like, you know, no effort. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Well, and that it just and it just feels weak to me. Right. And again, I can't. You know, I hate saying that. We're not. I'm not taking anything away from him. Brilliant songwriter, amazing singer. One of these guys that can just read the. You know, as they say, read the phone book and. Yeah. Anyway. Well, he and you know to get credit where credit is due. There, that is a fellow who. Influenced tremendously another Irishman, uh, Mr. Phil Ina. 
at Rory. And a big way, all, the thing that we love about Phil that both Patrick and I do, I think Patrick does it way better than me with the, the sort of singing over the beat, like singing, you know, like you kind of delay. And I've learned that from, from really from listening to you, is that if you, you, you miss, you forget, or if you don't come in, you know, you, you don't have to come in right on beat. And when you do that, you, you, you sort of c- 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 creatively figure out a different way to reach the end of the line. Yes. And it, but it doesn't have, you don't have to sing right on the beat. You can be late, you can be early, you can be late and early, you know, and that's yes. Phil Lina does that brilliantly. And he learned that from listening to Van Morrison. And Van Morrison yes, is I learned it from you, Dad. So that is something that Van Morrison does do on that song. But that is something you just definitely need to sell the rhythm section to pull off. Yes. So. Yes. And again, um, it's a good point. You know, sing the in and out of the beat. I detest folk music that plays for the lead instrument, be it the accordion or the fiddle or the tin whistle or the folk and bazooki. You know, whatever it is, if they are playing the melody line and the singer is singing it in time. It could not sound more square and more boring and more fucking yeah. vein slitting awful. You know, it's just too it's too predictable. It's too you know, I don't care how good the song is. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that is one of my favorite things to do. Listening to Phil, uh, we, we we shone a light on this a, a while back, but uh, running back uh, yes. to you, you know, the Thin Lizzy song I mean if you want to hear which check that one out too kids you want to you want to you want to feast for your ears yeah oh my god just get the jailbreak record by Thin Lizzy and thank us later oh so good so good so is that is that the one you're shining light on yeah no no I, I shot the light on the one first remember the one? Oh wait sorry yeah. okay, I'm sorry we went in the wrong order yeah, yeah. smoky smolly Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, just, just great fucking things happening, man. We got a great, we got, we got news for the new year upcoming. We got the, the tour in October. We got, uh, you need to subscribe if you want to save children from falling into blenders. And then, people, is that, is that still a thing? I guess the elections are over now. Today. Oh, won't be if you subscribe. Yeah, that's right. You can stop it all. Yeah. Hit subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell an enemy. Tell them all. Um, but yeah, and tune in next week. We're going to have yet another guest. Yeah. So, uh, that might not be next week, but yeah. it's going to be very, very soon. And you're going to love it. It'll be a week. Yes. In the future. So, uh, again, thank you all for listening. And, uh, our friends at US Backline and uh, uh, Finn McCool's best of luck will be pushing you for years and years and years to come. And also Axe Cade in Galveston, possibly a new home. Yeah. Watch this space. Yep. And uh, Buda. Anyway, thanks for listening. Nice. Turbo. Bye. Chad. Patty. See ya. Cheers. <laughs>